Coming up on OU Nightly, just because there aren't legal consequences for texting and driving in Oklahoma doesn't mean you won't get pulled over. One of nine popular fast food restaurants will soon replace Burger King at OU's Adams Tower. We'll tell you what restaurants, housing, and food is considering. And no OU players were taken in last night's first round NFL draft, but will Broyles and Lewis be putting on an NFL jersey tonight? Stay tuned for this and more tonight on OU Nightly. Welcome to OU Nightly. I'm Allison Harris. And I'm Erin Cahill. Distracted driving is the leading cause of car accidents. OU Nightly reporter Adriana Knight has more on the ways to prevent collisions on the road. Excuse us, we seem to be having some technical difficulties. We'll go to Chinook now. Chinook, what's our weather looking like? Well, guys, it's very warm outside. Look at the temperature, 88 degrees right now for this time of the year in April. That's almost unheard of. And the humidity is really low, 36%. And if you notice, if you've been outside, we've had some really gusty winds out of the south southwest at 10 to 50 miles per hour. We had some reports of some higher wind gusts earlier, and those temperatures are very mild across the state. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Chinook. It looks like we do have this story. More on the distracted driving story. If you drive a car, you've seen it. Oklahoma does not have a distracted driving law in place. However, Captain Easley says that won't prevent you from being pulled over. Police officers out there right now have an ordinance whereby they could cite people if they're driving all over the road while they're using their cell phone. According to the Kansas Transportation Department, drivers who text are 16 times more likely to be involved in a collision than drunk drivers. On average, an accident can happen within the three seconds it takes to send a text message, which could mean driving the length of this football field blindfolded. Unless you can touch type on a cell phone, you're looking down at it, more than likely. And if you're looking down while you're driving a car, that's bad news. All state really is striving to eliminate distracted drivers with texting while driving. Allstate Insurance Company has created a teen smart program that gives teens a discount on insurance up until the age of 25. It gives us an opportunity to educate teens and their parents more so for uneducated drivers. Distracted driving falls under more than just texting. A lot of the time people think that they should be able to put makeup on or reading or um, talking on the phone, playing with the radio. Just even laughing with your friends can be a distraction to a young driver. The best way to avoid distracted driving is to be aware of your surroundings. Adriana Knight, OU Knightley. For more information on Allstate's Teen Smart Driving Online course or Smart Student Discount, visit AdeptDriver.com or AllstateDriver.com backslash Teen Smart. Well, gas prices nationally continue to, continue to rise, but here in Oklahoma, we're faring a little bit better. Here in Norman, we're still paying an average of $3.56 per gallon. OU Nightly's Morgan Downing examines the reasons for the rise. With gas prices rising again, one local gas station owner wants customers to know the high prices don't mean more profit for him. Like sometimes you can make 15 cents, sometimes you, you can make 10 cents, sometimes you can make 5 cents. As our price at the pump rises, gas station owners' costs go up as well, including credit card fees and the cost to transport food and other supplies to their stores. To make money, he has to obey the market, and in the market, the cost of oil is going up. This pretty much corresponds to a lot of advancement in emerging countries in the world. Countries such as China and Brazil are consuming more oil than before, and the United States consumption is steady. Demand has been just really, really climbing, and whereas world oil production has not, and so you're looking at classical market economics. Demand goes up, supply is pretty constant, you get uh, essentially a higher price. With the lack of mass transit systems and other options, Doffenbach sees consumers continuing to purchase gas no matter the price. Morgan Downing, OU Nightly. 
A portable meth lab exploded in an Oklahoma man's pants today after he was pulled over for a routine traffic stop. David Williams was pulled over by an Oklahoma State trooper in Oak Mulgee County. The trooper said he questioned Williams about a chemical smell in the car. Then Williams took off running. During a struggle, the pressure of the portable meth lab built up and exploded. And now OU Knightley's Kelsey Hightower joins us in the news center with details about a new bill that would change the interest rates on student loans. Kelsey? Thanks, Allison. Republicans passed a bill in the House today to extend the low interest rates of federal student loans, but President Obama has already promised to veto it. Conservatives suggest to use funds from the Health Care Reform Act, but Democrats say they can just close tax loopholes for corporations. Rates are set to double July 1st if a solution can't be agreed upon. 27 people were injured in eastern Ukraine today from four different explosions spread across the city. Authorities suspected to be terrorist activity, but one lawmaker blames the government for placing the bombs to take attention off the imprisonment of an opposition leader. And the space shuttle named after the Star Trek ship Enterprise rode piggyback on a jumbo jet from Washington to New York. The shuttle was never part of a space mission, but helped in experimental programs. Onlookers from below enjoyed the show the pilot put on as he transferred the aircraft through New York City. That's a look at what's happening around the nation and around the world. Now back to you, Allison. Thank you, Kelsey. A Southmore High School employee went on the run after being accused of lewd acts with children. Tiffany Lynn Huffman, 28 of Yukon, was tracked down by federal marshals yesterday afternoon, just after 5 p.m. She originally was expected to turn herself in yesterday early, but didn't. Huffman is charged with three felony counts of lewd or indecent acts to a child under 16. And still ahead on OU Nightly, Kaylee Doherty is here with this week's screen scene. See what romantic comedy will have you engaged at theaters tonight. Plus, Chinook is here with a look at this weekend's forecast. We might be saying goodbye to these sunny skies. Stay tuned. back to OU Nightly. The OU Housing and Food Service tells us changes to the Adams Center Burger King location should be finished when students return in the fall. Multiple companies have submitted bids including Burger King who didn't like to or who would like to renew its contract. A decision will be made in May. Either Burger King stays or it will be replaced by another fast food chain restaurant. Now, nine restaurants are bidding on the location. Aside from fast food chains, two traditional sit-down restaurants are also in the running. They are IHOP and Denny's. We are told if, they, if the traditional sit-down restaurants are chosen, they may have to adapt to an express-style format with a limited number of menu items. And now, Kaylee Doherty joins us for Screen Scene. Kaylee? If you're looking for a break from studying for finals, there's a lot of great movies hitting theaters this weekend, like the romantic comedy The Five-Year Engagement. A quick proposal doesn't always mean a quick wedding. When Tom and Viola get engaged just one year after they meet, they seem to be headed towards a fairy tale happy ever after. However, in reality, their walk down the aisle turns out to be a lot longer than what they expected. And a more suspenseful option is Area 407, which tells the story of a New Year's Eve flight to Los Angeles gone horribly wrong. When the plane crashes due to bad weather, two teenagers find themselves in a top-secret government experiment. And many people are fans of Edgar Allan Poe's works, but one madman takes it too far. In The Raven, a murderer uses Poe's works as an inspiration to commit horrific acts. Poe himself joins a Baltimore detective to try to predict the killer's next move before his stories become no longer fiction. And Safe is also hitting the big screen this weekend. This film is about an ex-cage fighter who must come to the rescue of a young Chinese girl abducted by a Russian mob. The former agent must also defeat corrupt New York City officials and the Russian mafia. And if you're looking for something closer to campus, the Union Programming Board offers a free showing of Haywire tonight at 6, 9, and midnight in Meacham Auditorium. Mallory Kane is hired out across the world to perform unauthorized jobs. When she faces betrayal, she must find a way to make it home alive and get revenge on those who tried to hurt her. 
And lastly, something that you won't want to miss this weekend is the Red Bud Film Festival at 7 tomorrow night at the Sam Noble Oklahoma Museum of Natural History. Held by the Student Film Production Club, it's an opportunity for students from across campus to showcase their talent. This year, there will also be a free screening of OU alumni Sterling Harjo and Matt Leach's pilot episode of This Land TV, as well as a Q&A afterwards. Well, that's all I have today in Screen Scene. All right, thank you. Thanks. Well, still ahead on OU Nightly, many Sooners are anxiously awaiting to see which NFL teams Ryan Broyles and Ronald Lewis will soon be playing for. Tim O'Donnell will have an update about last night's first round draft, as well as a look at what's to come tonight. But first, we go to Chinook with a look at weather. Chinook? We're going to take a live look outside right now. 88 degrees. It's hot out there. I'll let you know when we'll see temperatures cooling off just a bit when OU Nightly continues. Welcome back to OU Nightly. It's been a real scorcher out there, 88 degrees for this time of the year. That's really unheard of for this time of the year, especially across Oklahoma. We've seen 90s across the southwestern parts of the state. Humidity, 36%, and it's really gusty with those winds out of the southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here are those temperatures. We've had temperatures in the upper 90s in parts of south Texas. Of course, across central Oklahoma, upper 80s and low 90s around here. A little bit cooler in Kansas, where that cold front is bringing some cooler temperatures. We also had the chance of severe storms across Kansas going into Missouri, going into Iowa as well. Fortunately, the severe weather will not make it into Oklahoma over the next couple of days. Now, tonight, those temperatures are going to be really mild, a low of 60 degrees for Norman, 66 Ardmore, a little bit cooler in Lawton at 57. And those highs tomorrow, not as hot as they were today, 78 for a high in Norman, 73 in Eden. We're going to have a cold front that's going to be kind of draped across the central part of the state, keeping things a little bit cooler along the area. Now here's that cold front for Saturday evening as it kind of drapes across the central part of the state along with it a few scattered showers but it looks like the main threat for more concentrated showers and thunderstorms will be on Sunday because that cold front's going to kind of stop moving essentially. It's just going to slow down and just uh, basi basically stay in the state and provide some showers and thunderstorms across the area for Sunday. So Saturday, about a 20% chance of rain statewide, but it's not until Saturday night that we see the more concentrated chances of rain across the state. And the rainfall could be heavy in a few places, but certainly we still need the rain even though we are technically out of the drought. But if you want to go plant something or anything like that this evening or over the weekend, the rain will help out. Now by 8 a.m., 63 degrees, east winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. By noon, 73 degrees, northeast winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. And by 5 o'clock in the evening, 78 degrees and those showers and thunderstorms starting to pop up across the state. Now let's take a look at that seven five-day planner, rather. 20% chance of storms on Saturday. Sunday, the chances increased about 50%. By Monday, the showers kind of lingering with that cold front, kind of bogging it down around the state. But Tuesday, clearing out with temperatures back into the 70s. And next week looks to be very nice. And we just got to get through a few unsettled showers this weekend. But other than that, I mean, it's not going to be a washout, but okay. just keep it in mind. No tornadoes, no severe no weather. No tornadoes, no <laughs> severe weather. That's, good. That's the most important thing. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Chinook. Mm -hmm. Tim, what's coming up in sports? Well, five Big 12 championships are taking place this weekend. All the details on those, plus softball and baseball on the road. All that coming up next in sports. Back to OU Nightly. I'm Tim O'Donnell with your OU Nightly Sports. The annual NFL Draft took place yesterday in New York City. Stanford quarterback sensation Andrew Luck was taken with the first pick by Indianapolis. Len Heisman Trophy winner Robert Griffin III was taken by Washington with the second pick. No OU players were taken in the first round for the second consecutive year, but lots of notable players are still available and are looking to go in the second or third round today, including Ryan Broyles and Ron L. Lewis. And the OU baseball team heads to Kansas this weekend for a three-game series with the Kansas Jayhawks in Lawrence. The Sooners jumped back in the top 25 this week, ranked 23rd, but have dropped their last two games heading into the series to Oklahoma State and Dallas Baptist, snapping their eight-game win streak. The Sooners look to start a new streak tonight at 6. And the fifth-ranked softball team takes a break from conference action this weekend as they travel to Conway, Arkansas to play Central Arkansas on Saturday. The Sooners are coming off their second Big 12 sweep, defeating Oklahoma State on Wednesday, in which with six games remaining, OU leads the Big 12 with a 14-4 conference record, thanks to their nation-best 1.01 ERA. The game starts Saturday at 1. 
The men's tennis team kicks off their bid for the Big 12 championship this weekend in College Station. The 12th ranked men have won 10 straight, including 5 of the top 30. They await the winner of Texas and Texas A&M, and they will play tomorrow morning at 11. And the women's squad defeated Kansas yesterday in the Big 12 tournament to set up their match with Baylor today already in progress. Baylor took the 1-0 lead after winning the doubles point. The seventh seeded Sooners, seventh seeded Sooners are looking to take down the second seeded Lady Bears for the second time this year. The men's golf team is hosting the Big 12 Championship at Whispering Pines Country Club this weekend, playing 36 holes today before 18 each Saturday and Sunday. The tournament already in progress with the Sooners tied for second with the Aggies. Both are six strokes behind the Red Raiders, but hold, oh, I'm sorry, both are, the Sooners are now five strokes behind the Red Raiders, leading Texas A&M by two strokes and Texas by ten strokes. And the women are also looks are looking to capture the Big 12 championship as they play this weekend in Lawrence. The women are coming off a one-stroke loss in the Bedlam Cup to Oklahoma State, but with the action already in progress, the Sooners finish day one four strokes off the lead to Iowa State. And the OU rowing team is hosting the Big 12 championship in OKC this weekend, where all four of their boats grab either the first or second seed for the tournament. The Sooners are undefeated in their conference and are looking for their first ever Big 12 championship. And the regular season has come to a close for the OKC Thunder, and with playoffs set to begin Saturday, the Thunder find themselves facing a familiar foe. The second-seeded Thunder will take on the seventh-seeded Dallas Mavericks in the first round. The Mavs eliminated the Thunder en route to an NBA championship last year in the Western Conference Finals. The first game tips off Saturday at 8.30 in OKC. And the OKC Redhawks opened a four-game series against the Round Rock Express last night and weren't shy of hitting the long ball. The Astros affiliate scored eight runs in the third inning, including a grand slam by designated hitter Mike Hessman. The first-place Hawks go at it again tonight at 7 in OKC. Lots of action this weekend. Big 12 championships all around. Sooners hoping to capture a few of those at least. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks Tim. Well, still to come on OU Nightly, we'll have another look at the five-day forecast. Plus, what OU is doing to give students a little reward during the stress of finals. See you after the break. I'm Whitney Ewing at the OU Nightly Update Desk, updating today's top stories. The Sooner Rowing Team hosts its Big 12 Championship in Oklahoma City this weekend. Races start tomorrow at 10 a.m. The Norman Music Festival is happening this weekend. Be sure to go to Main Street and check out some local bands. Be sure to like us and follow OU Nightly on Facebook. And if you have a suggestion for a news story, let us know. That's it for now. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Whitney. And just a quick reminder, you can always find more Oklahoma news as well as background stories and in-depth reporting at our sister organization, Roots. Roots is a student journalism webzine produced here at Gaylord College. The current issue focuses on the state of addiction in Oklahoma. Visit Roots online at roots.ou.edu. Again, that's roots.ou.edu. Well, finals are approaching and students are stressing, but OU's web communications and the phone application Foursquare are encouraging students to take a little time to smell the roses. Students can be rewarded for having a little fun. Here's a new reason to stop and take a picture the next time you walk through the South Oval. It could mean you winning a new TV or a Bob Stoops signed football. The Foursquare giveaway is kind of you know, leading up to uh, commencement and graduation, we really want to promote students getting out on campus, exploring maybe places they haven't been to yet. Students who use OU Foursquare can now check in in certain spots on campus. Then they take a picture and push that to Twitter using the hashtag OU Foursquare. After nine check-ins, you're entered into prize drawings. So we have a lot of exciting items to give away. Um, one of them is a Bob Stoop signed football. We have some OU uh, IT store giveaways from, from like Apple TVs to a Toshiba 32 inch television. The most funniest thing uh, for me when I just check in in any place, they, they will give me like uh, details about that place. There will be about three prize drawings every day during dead week and finals. So students should get involved now. For information on the giveaways and prize details, visit the web communications website at ou.edu slash webcom. All right, now let's take another look at the five-day forecast. 
Yeah, well, today it's been really hot, but tomorrow it's going to cool down. A, a high of only 78 compared to 88 this afternoon, 10 degrees cooler with a 20% chance of thunderstorms. Now, that cold front kind of slowly moves into the state on Saturday into Sunday, and it stalls out across the area with about a 50% chance of storms on Sunday. By Monday, the front kind of moves out the area, but still lingering showers and thunderstorms. But know those temperatures raising back into the 80s, and Tuesday, a high of 80 degrees, and Wednesday, partly cloudy with the 81 degree high, so that's really nice. <laughs> Crazy to me that we're in April and 75 degrees sounds cooler. Yes, that's really, that's, <laughs> that, that's very unusual for this time yes, of year. Yes, feels, feels like June. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Shana. Thanks. And we want to thank you for watching OU Nightly. This is the final newscast of the semester. While many of the news team members will be back in the fall, three of us here at the desk will be graduating. I'll see you in the fall, but good luck to all three of my senior colleagues, Allison, Aaron, and Chinook. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Bittersweet. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Good night.